GPT-5 was the most anticipated rollout of this year. OpenAI held a huge live stream and Sam Altman was hyping it up to be something massive. Everyone was expecting a huge breakthrough in AI and making a ton of other models completely irrelevant. But then once it got released, people were very, very disappointed. Person by person, all over X, people were saying that the model simply did not live up to the hype and was way behind models like Claude Opus, Grok 4, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. In this video, I'm gonna go through some of the criticisms people have with the model, what's wrong with GPT-5, and I'm gonna do some of my own tests to see if it's really as bad as people are saying it is. Let's jump right in. So the famous Death Star, photo seen around the world here. This was hours before GPT-5 release. Sam Altman released this Death Star photo. Uh, people were pretty hyped. They really thought GPT-5 was gonna be huge. I was super hyped. Um, some of the stuff I had seen in the rumors chat uh, about GPT-5 looked super promising, and I was really excited. I love these new models, and I love working with them, especially with coding. Um, but soon after, we started to get some pretty big disappointment uh, in the AI world. So this was the number one post on uh, our OpenAI on Reddit. Uh, my thorough evaluation of GPT-5, here are my re realizations. Claude is pretty fucking awesome. I'm a lot less concerned about ASI or whatever doomy scenario was being bounced around. GPT-5 is about lowering costs for OpenAI, not pushing the boundaries. And Sam's Death Star pre-launch hype image was really about the size of his ego and had nothing to do with the capability of GPT-5. Uh, apparently, it only has a 57 IQ. This really, really uh, shocked me here. So they did this IQ test on um, a MaximumTruth.org project, and GPT-5 only scored a 57 in IQ. O3 Pro was all the way over here in about the 115, 118 region, um, Opus, Opus 4 being very, very uh, high up there as well. This is crazy. I mean, how could they have released a model with such a low IQ? Um, so it turns out, one of the issues could be, and this is from Ethan Molek, really great follow on X. Um, essentially, the way that GPT-5 works is that unless you pay for model switching and know to use GPT-5 thinking or pro, when you ask, quote, GPT-5, you sometimes get the best available AI and sometimes get one of the worst AIs available, and it might even switch within a single conversation. So what happens is, if you're not specifically using one of the pro versions, it might default to one of their lower AI systems um, like GPT-5 minimal, which is really, really bad, which is, or GPT-5 low, which is behind Quen, which is an open source model, and way behind some other models, even the NVIDIA models that have come out, and, and their open source model, GPT-OSS, their open source model. So GPT-5 is this sort of all-encompassing model. And if I go to ChatGPT, another thing people are complaining about is they pretty much removed all the other models. So I don't have the option to use O3 Pro anymore. I don't have the option to use 4.0, which really sucks because I really, really enjoyed uh, GPT-03. I use GPT-03 all the time for research. It is for me the best research model, or at least it was until this rollout. So that's a huge letdown for me. And I pay for this and I, I paid for it mostly for GPT-03 to be able to use it a lot. So that's a huge letdown for me. So I'm not a huge fan of how they did this. Um, and I think they're pretty dead on when they're saying that uh, essentially this was done to lower costs for OpenAI, right? They wanted to remove all these other models and they wanted you to have uh, basically this one all-encompassing GPT-5 that defaults to whatever model it thinks is best based on your question, and that's why we're getting such poor results. Uh, here's another example that got really popular on X. Um, this guy did a math problem here using Grok4 and GPT-5. You can see that Grok4 solves it almost instantly. GPT-5 uh, spends a few seconds and actually gets the answer wrong, surprisingly enough. So it switches to a different model and then eventually does get the answer right. But uh, using the first model, it got the answer wrong. So that's pretty surprising. Um, also, Grok4 is still way ahead on the Arc AGI leaderboard here. Uh, GPT-5 high is beating Opus 4, um, but still way, way behind Grok4. So the Grok team definitely has been cooking, and I'm really excited for the next level of Grok, uh, you know, Grok 4.5, Grok 5, whatever it is. Um, a little bit more GPT-5 hate here. This is Levels IO. He's huge on X. Uh, I hate GPT-5, it's so bad, it's so lazy, and it won't let me switch back to 4.0 because I'm on plus. This really might make me switch to Anthropics app now. I'm annoyed. This is making my productivity 10x lower. 
I thought this was really funny. He had GPT-5 refactor his whole code base um, and it, it, it cleaned it up and made it beautiful, but none of it worked. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. Um, we already looked at this, the IQ, and some funny memes here. This is actually really surprising though. Quen, again, this is an open source model, beat GPT-5 in simple math. Not a good look for GPT-5 whatsoever. And uh, I think they might have gone backwards a little bit here. So I ran some tests of my own. I'm gonna show you what those look like uh, right now. So here's a few quick examples from Web Arena. And so we have a password strength checker here. So I have a password in here and we're gonna check the strength. We're getting a score of 70 out of 100 here. If I put the same password in the Gemini 2.5 Pro, I'm getting strong. This is using five different uh, parameters. So at least eight characters and all of these parameters. Um, it's using actually a lot more parameters here in GPT-5 and it even gave us a password generator. But I like this design so much more with 2.5 uh, Gemini 2.5 that I think GPT-5 did a good job, but I still prefer 2.5 Pro. Another example here is Claude Opus 4.1 versus GPT-5. This is a speed typing test. So I tested both of these. I found that the Claude Opus one was not only a better design, but actually more accurate. It picked up the words I was typing better uh, and gave me a better result. I feel like I did these pretty similar and I got 87 words per minute here in Opus and 69 here with a much higher accuracy. So it just wasn't picking up the words that I was typing even though I was typing them correctly. So even though I got some of them right, um, I definitely got some of them wrong, but the ones I got right still weren't picked up. So GPT-5 actually didn't do that great of a job here, although it did give me a little bit more data. Um, the design was not as good and it actually didn't do as good of a job on the actual accuracy of the test. So Claude Opus 4.1 definitely won here. So another thing I did is I actually needed to build a landing page. Um, so this is just a test landing page here. And I'm using GPT, so I started using GPT-5. It started to come up with a pretty good design, but there was massive issues with the design. So one of the things I'm finding with GPT-5 is that the design uh, the front end design can be very good for certain things, um, but it was missing a ton of issues. So the design just had a ton of problems. Half of this was missing and it was just empty. So I was using cursor to build this out. And essentially what I did is I finally switched over to Claude 4 Sonnet. Uh, and I basically said um, that we're having an issue here where it's missing a bunch of data. So I said, the area under choose your master, blah, 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 is not visible, it's blank. I know there's supposed to be images there, but it's just not showing, please fix. And so I tried this with GPT-5 a bunch of times, it was not able to fix it. I then switched over to Cloud4 Sonnet, and it immediately found the issue. I can see the issue, you updated the image path, but the images are located in a relative file, so it fixed the image path. And then it found another issue, that the reveal class had the opacity set to zero. So GPT-5 just did not do a good job of coding this. Uh, it, it came up with an interesting design, but it couldn't actually do the critical thinking to solve the problem and fix it. Uh, Claude Sonic came in and absolutely crushed it and fixed that problem. So um, I am gonna be sticking to Claude Sonic for coding for now. Uh, I am not gonna be using GPT-5. I've tried it. I've been very, very disappointed with it so far um, in a bunch of different tasks. So um, as of right now, uh, I am with a lot of people online. I am not a huge fan of GPT-5, although it does do a pretty good job sometimes. Um, I don't think it's quite as bad as people are making it out to be. Um, I just think that they overhyped it and that it turned out to uh, essentially be a little bit of a letdown, but it's still pretty good at some things. Still not good enough to compete with Claude uh, in the coding realm. And um, yeah, I think unless they have a massive breakthrough with GPT-6, and this was supposed to be their big breakthrough, GPT-5, uh, I think they're gonna start getting lapped. I think Grok is really on their tail. I think Google is right on their tail. Um, and Claude has been beating them this whole time with coding. So uh, left a lot to be desired, uh, that's for sure. And uh, we can see uh, someone here like King Kari getting very, very upset um, where they're getting cut off. We're reaching the cutoff with only three more web calls available. So he's not happy about that. Uh, as well, and uh, another funny meme here, the GPT-5 we were promised and the GPT-5 we were delivered. So um, love to hear your thoughts on this. Drop a comment, let me know how your experience has been with GPT-5. Um, subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content like this, more breaking news, more commentary on the AI world. 